Well, welcome once again to Migos and More. I am your host, and I will be appearing on camera today. Hopefully I won't scare everyone away. Um, I should be getting pretty good at this by now because this is my third attempt at this video. Uh, the first one, I was having internet problems when I uploaded it and it had some horrible glitch in it. So I was going uh, um, a lot in it too and making weird faces. So I decided I would just redo it. I just finished redoing it and I watched it and realized that Unfortunately, I had a huge glare from an overhead light, and it was washing out almost the entire video. <laughs> so, attempt number three. I'm going to do a model review kit today in um, this 125th scale 1937 cord model kit by Lindbergh. It's a plastic model kit. Um, Overall, I'm going to just say right up front, not impressed with the kit. It appears to be 1950s technology. It, the way the kit was constructed, it has multiple pieces to put the body together. Uh, it has a um, minimal amount of parts. Uh, I'll show the instructions here, and hopefully they'll come out better this time. As you can see, you have like, for example, the door panels are the un other side of the interior door panel, and the chassis is the flip side of the carpet of the car. Uh, you have multiple pieces for the cowl, you have multiple pieces for the front fenders, and this part here and I mean the it's just the engine I'm working on a 1966 uh, Mercury Park Lane convertible or I'm sorry it's a hard top but no it is a convertible anyway um, the uh, engine on that one is 22 pieces this is three and it was all totally chrome plated for some reason i've never seen an engine in a model kit completely chrome plated um minimal amount of decals you had one in the front one for license plate and a few for the instrument cluster which was also a problem in itself <clears throat> yeah not uh not the greatest kit in the world now I'm sure once I show you the kit, and here it is, completed, you'll probably say, well, it doesn't look that bad. And I probably would mostly agree with you. I think I went the little extra mile on it to try to put more detail into it and to make it look presentable, whereas perhaps a novice putting it together, it really wouldn't look that good. Um, and I had to do multiple uh, test fittings and trimmings, and it was just overall it was it was not. I won't I wouldn't use the word delightful. Let's just say that, uh, you know, looking at it, I'll come around. And I'll get the camera mobile so you can get a better look. But yeah. As you can see, it doesn't look that bad. Now you might notice that right here, these are all supposed to be uh, with a very thin chrome strip on them. Uh, I'll show you on the box here so you can get an idea. You can see here, but it was so hard to make a tiny little strip like that. I decided to just leave it rather than make it look like crap. Uh, I mean, I had to paint the white walls. I had to paint this red part around the, the rims here to get it to match the actual car. The underneath is like almost no detail. I 
idea of what it looks like here. This um, windshield was a nightmare to get on. The engine, not very detailed as you can see. But to compare and contrast, here is a, another kit that I recently completed, an AMT 1948 Ford, and it came out pretty nice. It's very highly detailed. It's a very, it was a fun kit to build actually, and, and it, it came out pretty good. I mean, it makes, it blows this 1937 cord out of the water. I mean, if you look on the box here, it was a little misleading. I mean, they show you, for example, these lights you don't get, you don't get this top. Um, you don't get an outside mirror. It is just, you know, this is the actual car on the box. So, I mean, you know, I'm not, I wasn't expecting an actual car, obviously, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I expect a little bit more out of my model kits. I guess I'm spoiled from the highly detailed ones that they give you nowadays. Um, I mean, you can see down in here some ones that I've done that some of these are older, some of them are newer. That blue Torino next to the orange Corvette, that was a very, very detailed kit and, and challenging to build. That red Chrysler 300 was also a nicely detailed kit. But anyway, focusing on this one. Here's a rear shot. Here's that dashboard I was telling you about. If you can maybe get a peek in there. It'll look okay on display, but overall I can't recommend it. Um, I'd say look for the kit. I think AMT put one out. Maybe Monogram. They're probably light years ahead of this one. Don't waste your money. You won't be happy with it. Look forward to doing another model review. Hopefully this was enjoyable and you'll be looking for my other videos in the future. I think the next one will probably be on the 1966 Mercury Park Lane. And now I'm thinking about it. It is a hard top, not a convertible. <laughs> so anyway, I'll say goodbye for now and hope to see you again soon.